I think there's really just one more feature to go into here, which is the master EQ. Okay. So the master EQ is it's instantiating like a, a determined EQ that's different for every cab and every microphone to an extent. So it's really quite an in-depth thing and it's doing a lot more than it did in Cali because Cali, those specific cabs are very musical. They don't have much in the way of spikes. Mm -hmm. They're a lot less wild as we were talking about. There's just a lot less work needed to be done. In Goldstack, they are a lot more wild. You've got more cab resonances, more kind of speaker notch uh, whistles that need notching mm. to sound pleasant on the ear at volume. And all of that is taken care of with the Master EQ, along with sometimes some just global bumps or cuts in the mid-range or presence region just to make it a bit more of a flattering EQ. It's not necessarily saying you put that on and you won't need to touch any more EQ, mm -hmm. but I will say for a lot of the demo tracks that we did for Goldstack, certainly the ones I was involved with, when it came to mixing, I would just put the Master EQ on and then mess with the amp controls because that takes care of a lot of the, the narrow stuff. And then you can use the EQ controls on your amp of choice to actually sculpt the rest of the guitar mm. tone during tracking. And I didn't need to use any more EQ than that on those demos. I have a question. Yeah. With that, with that e master EQ, is that universal or is that per cabinet? It's per cabinet. Really? And, and with some, it's per speaker. Sorry, with, uh, per microphone as well. Wow. So if you were to load up, say, two or three cabinets, would it be blending three different master EQs together to give you the final result? So it's literally changing, under the hood, it's changing the, the impulse that's loaded to a pre-EQ'd one. You can think of that as like, currently it's raw, you yeah. click the switch and everything's getting EQ'd and everything's getting it's EQ'd in treatment. a way that's specific to that cab. And if you export it, it will have that yeah. baked into it. And that's the same for Cali as well, right? Same for Cali as well, yeah. I'm just glad we're, we're putting out there more about exactly what it does because I think some people didn't fully get the idea. I honestly thought it was just post plug-in almost, like the last thing that you'd hear is the master EQ across yeah. everything. So that's yeah. really interesting. Well, that's our bad. I think we could uh, highlight more what it's doing. And in this case, it's doing a lot of sweetening. Yeah. And especially yeah, yeah. when it comes to high gain tones, I think that's something which, um, which people are going to find they want to use almost by default. Mm. So maybe it's time to move away from the twin sister, which has been doing really well. And I'm kind of, part of me feels that we should just stick to it. But let's, we've got some really tasty amps here. Let's go into the uh, Dan Gower mod, the Rock Monster, yeah. which looks like a JCM 800, but frankly, I don't think there's much JCM 800 left. <laughs> right, yeah. okay. So let's check out the high gain tone on that as a vehicle for hearing what the Master EQ does. Sweet. So to demonstrate what the Master EQ feature does, we're going to use a really high gain tone. We're going to plug into the, the um, Gower modded, Dan Gower modded JCM 800. And we're still boosting it with the JSA Palilalia, but whatever it is, uh, overdrive. <laughs> Just turn the gain back a little bit on that. We've kept the, the high boost on there to give it a bit more teeth. Using my Manson Oryx, this is a guitar I designed with Manson guitars. It's kind of really, it's aimed to give you like a really thick, um, chunky, guitar sounds so hopefully that's going to work well in concert so um let's use the focused cab which i think is one of the really kind of metal appropriate cabs but it's also one that's got a bit of spiky stuff going on that the master eq really tames and then i think maybe what will make sense is just to get you to keep jamming i'll change mics yeah and be toggling that okay cool all right <laughs> That is awesome. Yeah, that's um, that's a tone. Yes, I like that a lot. Girthy. 
really, really fat. And I mean, I almost coming back to this within this context, I'm quite shocked at how much the Master EQ is making cabs which otherwise feel pretty unusable. You know, cabs like the the glassy cab without the Master EQ with this kind of tone is just yeah so so kind of glassy in yeah. a bad way in this in this case, and and it really gets tamed by that. So yeah. Yeah, I was enjoying it. I wasn't even really, I was just into it. So that's always a good sign. Yeah. I mean, I was I was into loads of those cabs, to be honest, yeah. for, for this context. And yeah, again, just proof that there's life in the old greenback yet yeah, for modern styles as well. Well, know? that's it. I think I'm, I'm a huge believer in if it sounds good, use it kind of thing. And this is a great demonstration. It's like you may not necessarily think a greenback speaker is going to work for metal or whatever, especially not modern metal. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think hearing that, I'd like to argue that a little bit. Why not, eh? I mean, one of the issues you might have in real life would be also whether those, because there are only 25 watt speakers, whether they can handle the low end. Yeah. Uh, something which wouldn't, in the impulse world, kind of becomes a bit hyper real because they kind of have infinite headroom. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's something which is kind of nice as well about having a plug-in like this. I think what could be cool while we're on this will be to chuck a little bit of delay on. Yes. And maybe hear a bit more kind of soaring lead tone action. Yes. That's all the facilitate allowed for a pinch. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear such a half ass pinch? Oh. I'm sure everyone will appreciate that that sounded awesome, nonetheless. It sounds, I mean, feel-wise, then for lead, again, I was, I was into it more than I was listening to what you were doing, mm. which I think is, is a really good thing. Yeah, and I mean, again, especially with the Master EQ on, it just feels like everything works. Yes. Know? That's like a blend of cabs from across the era of, of uh, greenback production and it still sounds like something that you could use in you know any kind of death metal song for your lead tone or whatever. I was gonna say I feel like this particular suite is fantastic for lead tones I feel like yeah. just based off that because you know it's got to be really pronounced and bold and stick out and mm -hmm. uh, to be fair in comparison to like a v30 like a greenback's gonna do that especially for lead yeah and and getting really geeky for a second the the diameter of the voice coil on the greenback's a little bit smaller right it kind of shifts like the the throat like yeah. Yeah, yeah like if you think in terms of a voice it kind of it makes it a little bit higher in timbre yeah yeah and i think that's one of the things that works it gives it that quite kind of vocal aspect i appreciate that you just did your own timbre there did i oh wow yeah. I did when you said higher in timbre there, it suddenly <laughs> went a little bit thinner there i was like nice nice real time yeah. demo well i'll take all the credit for that unintentional <laughs> <laughs> um so I think really all that remains to round this out, because people are definitely going to be yeah. wanting to hear more playing and less talking at this point, will be let's plug in the vintage Marshall. It's a mid-70s super lead, so that's, it's got a metal plate, it's not a plexi, but it has had a few part values changed around inside it to bring it closer to what you'd get from that kind of like Holy Grail, 68, 69 um, era plexi. And yeah, let's go for it. All right, we are going for gold on this one, to excuse the pun. I was about to say Gold that, top, uh, Marshall, oh, yeah. gold stack. That is, that is literally everything on full um, with a jumper, super lead, bright cap on, uh, fat cap on as well, so it's gainier. And I mean, you know, the, you see some, I think it's pretty much debunked at this point, but people talk about how Eddie Van Halen must have modded his amp to get the amount of gain that he had, but what you'll hear in a second is, I mean, within the realms of a stock Marshall parts value wise, you know, a, an amp perfectly well could have come out of the factory with exactly that setup. On 10, yeah. loads and loads of power amp distortion. It's fuzzy, it's nasty, it's amazing at the same time. It's really gainy. Yeah. Um, I've just gone straight for a, a, a nice com combination here of um, SM57, Royer, 
and some room, all with the smoky cab. So this is that kind of classic 71 Polsonic cone. All right. Let's see what it sounds like. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so intense. <laughs> the, the, the buzz alone is so loud, so loud. But that is, um, yeah, it's amazing. I love hearing that, you know, even though we're hearing that through a load box. How, what do you reckon that would be like if you were in the room? I, I mean, it's, it's unimaginably forceful. I think. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, like the feeling of that yeah. on your body is pretty outrageous. Right. I've only, I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever experienced everything on tan in person. No, no neither have I. Um, Unimaginably I forceful. Love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think people like Pete Thorne and Dave Friedman would probably be angry that we haven't, but yeah, I've experienced close to it. I've experienced the JCM 800 really loud, just a bit more percussive sounding. Yeah. And that, um, it's, it's painful. <laughs> I don't <laughs> I think, think I've it's... ever heard like a classic amp turned up all the way. Right. It's almost as bad as like not watching Spinal Tap or something, isn't it? Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, well, anyway. Didn't, no, didn't Dave Friedman have like a booth at NAMM one time where people could go in and just play a plexi on full? I didn't hear that. I did, personally didn't hear that. No, though. but I mean, imagine being in an isolation booth with one of those. Yeah, I can't it's think like, of much worse, to be honest. Deafening. Like in a cage with a tiger or something. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's, yeah. <laughs> let's, um, let's bring it back from the edge of uh, calamity here. Mm -hmm. Let's... Um, <laughs> Let's maybe roll back at least the gain and some of these controls. Okay. So let's bring, let's keep the presence um, fairly low, treble fairly low. I'm going to unjumper it. So we'll just hear one channel, bright switch off to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, let's see how that sounds. <laughs> I mean, similar vibe, just more controlled. Yeah, it's quite, it's a lot more kind of round sounding, yeah. I think. I mean, everything on full, you've got so much, you were saying, like, interharmonic modulation yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. Like, it's power amp just on meltdown kind of <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, this feels a bit more in control, yeah. a bit higher headroom. Um, Be cool to try it with the telly, actually. Yeah, let's do that. I think okay. this would be an appropriate sound. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that. I mean, that is Kerrang. Yeah, it, it is. It yeah. feels super vintage as well. Yeah. Like, the sound of it, everything about the way it's saturating and everything yeah, into I, it. I was shocked when I rolled that room mic down. Yeah. At how suddenly like small it sounds. Again, I know I've said it over and over and over in this video, but I think the room mic really adds something, especially for this kind of sound. It's the hidden gem. Yeah. I say that because I had no idea there was a room mic in it when I first loaded it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully people that have made it this far won't make yeah. the yeah. same mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Should we maybe round things out with a bit of fuzz? Absolutely. Yeah. It would be rude not to. I mean, 
That is pretty outrageous, isn't it? So yeah. for people to understand, that's the a JSA FU fuzz, just a little one knob mini pedal going into the, the non-bright input on the Marshall, kind of just trying to roll off top end if we can. Um, with the telly, I mean, that's just, it's just nasty, isn't it? Should we yeah. do that one more time? Yeah. If you play for a second so people can hear the tone without okay. it, then. Yeah. Couldn't hold on. <laughs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I really like that with the uh, the syrupy cab, the kind of broken speed. Yeah. That's just, you know, taking all that edge off the top of it. Well, I think that's been a pretty thorough demonstration and talk through the plugin. Yeah, I think so. Thank you so much, Rabia, for coming along and helping us with this. Thank it's you for asking me down. down. You were very highly requested, and uh, I was looking forward to it as well. Sorry about your finger. You've done a, a top job throughout. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Oh, well. Wicked. And to anyone who's still watching, thank you very much for watching. And um, I hope that if you get hold of Goldstack, that uh, you're able to mine a bit more goodness out of it as a result of watching this. Thanks, guys. <laughs>